photographers and uh, for the latecomers, I think they can still join us when they are ready. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, thanks everyone for coming to, this is the second session of our developer gym. Uh, uh, Michael, by the way, is a recording okay now? Cool. Uh, so for this session, uh, we will continue from our la last session where we uh, give you an introduction of uh, what TDD is. Uh, and this session, we will do some coding kata uh, with the TDD skills. Uh, I saw some of the new faces in this session, so I will start with uh, some of the kind of recap of what the TDD is. But it would be very brief, and uh, uh, the majority of this afternoon you will spend by uh, doing more coding and practice the skill by yourself. Uh, and actually, sorry, not, not by yourself, with your friends. Um, so, uh, so what is the code kata? Uh, code kata is basically uh, uh, the, the sessions where you practice your basic programming skills like uh, uh, writing a simple program, writing test cases, make it run faster, make it run better. Basically, those basic uh, uh, skills, you're practicing it again and again so that you will become a more proficient developer. So it's just similar to those uh, Kung Fu masters, right? They become master by practicing those uh, basic moves again and again. Those may look very boring uh, if you just look at it by itself, but in the end, it's those basic exercises and practices that make them uh, a Kung Fu master when they fight. Uh, Today, uh, let's do some uh, TDD uh, practice or the exercise uh, on the TDD. Let's do a quick recap. What is TDD? Uh, by the way, uh, just to have a show of hands, how many of you are, are totally new to TDD? You are OK. And I assume the rest, OK. Cool. Uh, but I will still give you some quick introduction what it is. Uh, so TDD is or uh, test-driven development is our approach. Uh, it's one uh, uh, it's approach or it's a style uh, for you to uh, write your code. Uh, so typically, uh, when you develop your program, uh, you will uh, just write the logic to solve your problem. And you may or may not write test cases, or sometimes you write te test cases after you write your program. But then uh, TDD is a kind of a, uh, approach which encourage you or, or forces you to write the test cases in advance, even before you write the first line of the, the code to, write, to solve your problem. Uh, the benefit is uh, it, this test cases will help you to guide your design of your solution. As we will see later today, uh, you will do some exercise and you will find out that those test cases help you to, fo to get focused. Uh, on the on the step that you are uh, you are moving, and the, to help you to, to design your solutions, and also uh, in the end, uh, if you practice this, you will accumulate a set of uh, test cases, which can be a, a safety net later when you make further modifications to the system, etc. Uh, those test cases would be a, a layer of production for you. So there are typically three steps if you follow the TDD style in, in writing your code. The first step is to write a test case. Uh, which obviously would fail in the beginning because you haven't uh, got any logic or real implementation to make it pass. The second step, you just you need to write your uh, the code, the production code, which make this test case pass. And the the secret here is you should just make enough implementation to make it pass. No more than that. So for example, you should not think about uh, error scenarios that is not being tested yet. You should not think about of uh, what will happen in tomor tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. You should not think about too much about the future. Just focus on the problem or the, the test case that is failing right now and make just enough changes in your code to make the test case pass. And then the third step, which is also very important, to do the refactoring on your code base. Uh, later, I have another slide to talk about what kind of a refactoring you, you need to do. There are only four simple rules you need to follow today. And then uh, after you make the, the code cleaner, then you, you finish one cycle, and then you can continue uh, with the next cycle, writing the next test case, make it a pass, and uh, make your code better. So just keep, keep doing this kind of cycle. Okay, uh, in the last session, we gave you a few uh, rules or tips uh, you should follow. So as beginners, uh, I, s I would suggest you to treat this as rules and uh, uh, to, to basically to, to, to force yourself to follow the, those, those basic rules. And uh, once you become more proficient, you might want to uh, move in bigger steps, or s maybe you can skip some of the rules. But in the beginning, uh, try to follow them. So the first rule, uh, uh, th OK, this rule, you can't re really violate the rule. Uh, this is TDD, require you to write the test case first, right? Before you write any production code, the first thing you should do is write a test case, uh, which would fail in the beginning. This is uh, the rule number one. Rule number two, uh, you should only have, have one failing test case at a time. So some of the uh, people, uh, they, they may have a habit of uh, writing a few test cases, which are all failing, 
and then they started to implement the, the code or the logic. Uh, that is, uh, uh, I would say, it's a, it's a bad habit. Uh, so for TDD, you should really uh, just follow the habit of uh, having one failure test case, and uh, then move on to the, to the implementation to make this test case pass. Then you have your second failed test case. So do not have more than one failed test case at a time. Again, the reason is because each test case is supposed to be a guide. Right? You follow this t failed test case, which makes you focused uh, to just think about how to make it pass. If you have uh, more than one field test cases, your mind will be more uh, kind of bloated, right? You're thinking about, oh, what do I need to do in order to make those two test cases pass or 10 test cases pass? Then you couldn't really get focused. So uh, in order for you to get focused, just stay with one field test case each time. OK, uh, the number three, uh, you should write small test. Uh, small meaning uh, I have a slide to basically to describe what is, could be a small test. So one way to describe this small test is uh, each test should only focus on one particular behavior or feature of the, uh, or one, maybe one rule or one pattern in the problem that you are trying to solve. And uh, in terms of the time taken to make the test case pass, it should be very fast. Uh, so uh, I, have, I put, put the tip number here like 10 minutes, uh, but it's up to you. If the problem is very simple, maybe you should even achieve uh, sh even shorter time to make the test case pass. But in reality, if you're solving a very complicated problem, maybe you can allow yourself to take, let's say, uh, 20 minutes or so to make the test case pass. But still, the guideline is, uh, if your test case is small enough, you should not spend a lot of time uh, to make it a pass. And typically, uh, each test case uh, should only have one reason to fail. And in uh, some cases, this basically means that each test case, you should only have one assertion. Uh, if you're familiar with the, the unit test or those libraries, right, you know that you can use expect or assert, whatever. So you should, uh, you should try to have one assertion per test case. You, then basically, that means your test case only have one reason to fail. Um, number four, uh, you should make uh, the in baby steps, meaning that uh, you should uh, write the production code uh, to make the first te field test case to pass, uh, no more than that, uh, which is the, the one I already mentioned this one to you just now. Uh, rule number five. Um, so when you have a choice, right, the test case failed, and uh, when you try to make this test case pass, you may have a few choices. And among those choices, I would recommend you to pick the simplest one. Uh, to start with the simplest one first, and uh, when you add more and more test cases, naturally uh, your solution or your algorithm will grow more and more uh, uh, complicated. So do not uh, run into the, the most generic solution or most complicated algorithm right away. Try to follow the simplest solution you can have. And then uh, generalize your solution when you add more and more test cases. Um, Rule number six, uh, do not forget about uh, refactoring. So remember, there are three steps in the TDD cycle. And uh, once you make the test case pass, the next step is always uh, do the refactoring. Do not skip right away to your uh, next test case. Look at your code. Uh, are there anything you can improve? Are there any duplications in your code that you can simplify? Uh, or are you choosing a more complicated algorithm? Can you simplify it? So think about along those directions to make your code uh, better. Uh, also, uh, do not forget to, to refactor your test case. Uh, so if once you have more and more test cases, you should also look into the duplications in your test cases. Are there anything you can uh, make your test case more concise or, or, or more easier to understand, et cetera, et cetera? So the test case, in the end, is, a, is kind of a li live documentation for the code. Right? If you make this test case easy to understand, people, uh, whenever the test case fail, people will have a better or have an easier life to troubleshoot why it fails. If the test case itself is very hard to understand, then uh, to in the end, it becomes pretty useless. Um, number eight, rule number eight. So try not to do the refactoring when your test case are failing. So this is uh, kind of a pitfall. Uh, when uh, you, you have a failed test case, you're trying to make some changes in your code to make the test case pass. But then you notice that some part of your, your code is ugly. Uh, and you feel that, oh, I, I should make this part better. And then at that time, tell yourself, this is not my focus right now. My focus is to do something to make the test case pass. Even if there's some problem in this piece of code here, I should not worry about it right now. I should probably note it down somewhere. And then later, uh, once you make the test case pass, then it's your, it's your t there is a dedicated slot called refactoring for you to uh, do the improvement at that time. So try not to mix the refactoring together with the, the second step. 
uh, the implementation part. Uh, okay, uh, now let's talk about uh, how do you do refactoring. Uh, so uh, the term refactoring is referring to the to the changes you make in your code to make it better without changing the behavior. Uh, so uh, it sounds very abstract, and but then in the end, uh, uh, there are four simple rules you need to follow or you can follow to make your code uh, better. So the first rule is your code needs to pass all the test cases. This is rule number one. All right. Second one is your code needs to be clear enough to express your intention. So as a basically, uh, to in, in layman's term, that basically means that if you ask some, someone to read your code, he should be able to understand your code uh, maybe in, uh, uh, in a few seconds without uh, spending minutes or even uh, uh, hours to read and understand or even ask you why. Why do you write in this part? What does it mean? So if, if someone needs to ask you uh, what it means, then it's not clear enough. So you should try to write your code to express your intention so that's so clear that the code explains by itself and nobody needs to ask around why, what's the reason for this piece of code. Uh, then uh, the third rule is uh, there should not be, uh, there shouldn't be duplications in your code. When, whenever you see uh, the code uh, looks two pieces of code, they look very similar. Then you should try to do something like extract a common function or common methods to make it more reusable and avoid dupl duplications in your code. The fourth rule, uh, which is called minimal. Uh, so this rule uh, take, uh, takes a bit of time to understand and practice. So uh, uh, to, to, to make it easy to start with, you should just ask, ask yourself, uh, given a line of code, if I delete this line, uh, would my code still work? If yes, just, de just delete it. Or from the method or function level, I have a function here. Do I still need this function? If I delete this function, my code still works, then I should delete it. And uh, from the even on the higher level, let's say you, in your code you have a, a, a few classes, or let's say you have a, a few uh, interface you define for, for some of the classes. Ask yourself, if I delete that interface, would my code still work? And if it don't say yes, then you should delete that interface. So basically try to go minimal. Uh, write as little code as you need in order to, to solve the problem. So, uh, you, so if you follow this direction, your code overall will become more simpler. So just remember these four rules uh, to, to, to when you write the code. Later during the exercise today, uh, we will be following the TDD cycle. And during the refactoring, uh, you should follow these four rules. Whenever you, you tell yourself, I'm going to do the refactoring now, then you should ch check, your, check your code. Does it pass all the test case? Or does it e express your intention? And uh, uh, you will probably pair uh, with uh, some of your friends. And then uh, just ask, ask your friend, is this code clear to you? If it's, if it's not clear, then you need to refactor it to make, uh, make the intention clearer. And then check, are there any duplications? Even in your test cases, are there any duplications in your test case? What can you do to remove those duplications? Then it, are there anything you can delete? So ask yourself those questions so to just check uh, if your code can be, can be further simplified. OK, uh, that's a quick crash course for what is TDD. And the uh, yeah, last session, we spent a lot of time on theory. And I heard some people complain that the, the pace was a, bit, was a bit slow. So today, uh, let's uh, do more hands-on exercise. Uh, so you will in hopefully you enjoy uh, the, this TDD style and learn something use, useful out of this. Uh, today, uh, the, the exercise we are going to do is uh, uh, write a program uh, to convert Arabic numbers into Roman numerals. Uh, how many of you have heard about this uh, exercise before? Okay. Uh, no, uh, never mind. This is actually a pretty simple problem. Uh, so let's basically talk about the Roman numerals first. Uh, so uh, you probably uh, seen some Roman numeral numbers before, but uh, uh, do you know the rules that forms those numbers? Uh, if not, let's uh, start with, the, with, with those, those, those rules first. So y your task today, firstly, is to understand the rules. Uh, how do you form Roman numeral numbers? And later, your task is to write your code to convert the, the integers, uh, the Arabic numbers, into this uh, Roman numeral form. So let's start with the, the, the Roman numeral rules. Uh, firstly, uh, the, they're letters, right? Um, the, those funny letters, uh, they have some meanings, like I stands for 1, and V stands for 5, and X stands for 10, uh, etc. So there are a bunch of letters. 
and each of the letter corresponding to one value. You can start with this first, okay? And then uh, once you have those letters, you can combine them to make bigger numbers. For example, uh, if you want to say two, two basically means one plus one, right? And that means you have an I, then followed by another I. Put them together, that basically means two. And then three, <coughs> three is also very simpler. Three basically means one plus one plus one. So you just need to have a three I's, put them together, that is three. Okay, so far the rules are pretty simple, but then the next one would be a bit more complicated. So the number four, it shows as RV, but the Y, the rule here is uh, V stands for five, uh, I stands for one. So whenever you see our, our I, uh, which is one, before V, which is five, the I is smaller than five. In this case, uh, it's not a submission, it's actually a subtraction. Meaning that uh, the, the, in order to interpret this value, it is actually uh, the, the value on the right minus the values on the left, which is five minus one, which is four. So this is the rule. Uh, somehow they define it in this way. Don't ask me why. Uh, so they, they probably feel this is funny, or maybe this is uh, uh, more efficient, but they design it in this way. So four is equal to five minus one. So you just need to put one in front of five, and you have four. And uh, six, how do you express six? Six, OK, back to the normal rule. Six equal to five plus one. And uh, then basically you have a V followed by I. So you ask me, OK, I should also, six is also equal to three plus three. Can I just pay, put six I's uh, there? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, so there are certain rules saying that uh, those values like I, uh, maybe X, each of them, they can only be repeated maximally three times. You cannot repeat them more than three times. That's why for four, you can't really just put I, 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 that doesn't work. That violates the rule. So that's why you need to express four as uh, five minus one. Uh, that's why you have that IV representation. Um, and then for seven, it become, come, becomes easy again. Seven basically means five plus two, right? You have V plus I plus I. And eight, again, is easier. So eight basically means five plus three. You already know how to represent five, and you also know rep how to represent three, so you just need to put them together. So basically in this Roman numeral uh, rules, right, most of the time is uh, just a kind of a summation. Uh, you have uh, a few letters. In order to find the total value, you just need to summarize the individual values from left to right, one by one. The only exception you see here so far is uh, for the situation like a four, uh, where you have to put one before five, in that case, it's a, a subtraction instead of uh, submission. So far, that's the only exception. Otherwise, the rule is uh, pretty simple. Uh, but then, again, when you look at nine, uh, this, this uh, subtraction rule come in again. So in order to represent nine, uh, you can't see it's five plus four. Uh, you have to say nine is equal to 10 minus one. Then, in order to represent 10 minus one, what do you do? You just put i in front of 10. Sorry, you just put i in front of x, which is put 1 in front of 10, then that becomes 10 minus 1, which is 9. And again, you have, uh, well, this is just rules they define, so try to remember, try to follow. Uh, once you get used to this rule, this kind of rule, it will be easier. Um, so uh, these are the basic rules. Uh, actually, uh, there, OK, let, let me give you another more example. So how do you represent this uh, 980 and 2 into a Roman numeral? Uh, the, the, the logic is very simple. Uh, firstly, you need to break this uh, number into the digits. Like you need to break this into 900, 800, sorry, 80, and 2. Right? Or rather, you, if you think about digit, there's a one di a digit 9 on the hundreds pla place, and another digit 8 at the tens place. And the last digit is 2 at the uh, ones place. So it depends on how you think about it. So there, you either think about this one as a 900 plus 80 plus 2, or you think about this one as a 9 at the hundreds place, 8 at the tens place, and uh, 2 at uh, singles place or ones place. So other otherwise, once you break this down into three pieces, the task is just to convert each individual digit or number into the corresponding Roman numeral. And uh, then for each of them, you just need to follow the rules that we shared just now. Right? Uh, CM, uh, 900 happens to translate to CM. 
uh, because 900 is equal to 1,000 minus 100. 1,000 is M. Uh, 100 is C. So you need to put C. You need to put C in front of M to follow this uh, subtraction rule. That's why 900 is equal to CM. And 80, 80 is basically equal to 50 plus uh, 30. Just now we, I told you that A is eight is equal to 5 plus 3. For 80, it's the same. 80 basically means that uh, it's 50 plus 30. 50 is uh, L, and 30 is basically 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is a 3 triple X. Right? That's why you come out with this rule, uh, which is uh, this one. Then 2 is very simple, just I. So now once you have the, the representation for every single digit in this integer, uh, you just need to concatenate them into one. And this is the final representation of, uh, of, this, the, of this, uh, the, this Roman numeral. So, so if someone asks you to give you an uh, Arabic number, in order to convert this integer into the Roman numeral, you just need to follow this two steps. First step, break it down into digits. Second step, for each digit, convert it into uh, uh, some kind of a Roman numeral representation using the rules, either the summation rule or subtraction rule I uh, told you just now. And then you get the, the individual representation, and then you concatenate them. Concatenate them. So that's the, the final uh, representation. Uh, there are further rules, which uh, basically uh, uh, I showed you some rules just now, like for, for x or i. Uh, f basically, for those values, re re that represent 1, 10, 100, 1,000, those values, they cannot be rep repeated more than three times. That's one rule. Uh, another rule saying that uh, the i, uh, they can only appear in front of v or x. So the letter i, they cannot appear uh, in front of, uh, let's see, uh, 100. So that's another rule. Uh, if you like, you can take a screenshot of this slide. Uh, but then uh, this rule is actually pretty complicated to understand and remember. I simplified it a bit. Um, OK, uh, wait, um, where are my simplified rules? Uh, oops, I forgot to save it. Uh, Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go through these rules first. Maybe my rules are in the other places. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the the next line, says, the third rule, third one says basically here says that uh, whenever you put a smaller number in front of a bigger number, the rule is basically summation. Sorry, subtraction instead of uh, summation. And uh, also, uh, there is no uh, number zero in Roman numerals, and uh, there is no negative numbers. Uh, actually, uh, there's uh, if you follow the rules we defined just now, actually there's also a upper bound, the maximum number that can be represented using Roman numeral using those few letters, which is uh, 3,999. So that is the maximum number if you follow the rules we described just now and using the, uh, those few uh, available characters. Um, yeah, if you like, take a, take a screenshot. But otherwise, uh, 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 later you will do your kata. But in the first round of the kata, actually, this these few rules are not that important. Um, otherwise, uh, if you really need them, you can just search online, uh, uh, search on Google, just search uh, Roman numeral. Uh, there are quite a few websites which basically tells you uh, those those rules. Uh, later, if you need the rules, I can either share the slide on the screen uh, or uh, give you the link. Okay. Um, so that's about the rules. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, we're about 30 minutes into this talk. So let's start uh, writing some code. Uh, and But you would not write the code by yourself today. Uh, you're going to uh, pair up with someone. Uh, like two of you will be share the same computer and the same keyboard. Basically, uh, uh, find your friend and uh, then use uh, one of your computers. Uh, and you will uh, write your code uh, in a ping pong style, uh, meaning that uh, for you though, uh, if I'm pairing with you, sorry, what's your name? Ping. Ping. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Ping. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm Pong. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm Pong. <laughs> so uh, Ping uh, will write. Uh, let's see. Ping will write the test case, which fails, and then I'm going to write uh, the code to make the test case pass, and then I'm going to do some refactoring to make the code cleaner, and then I'm going to write uh, a new test case. So after I write this new test case, then Ping uh, is Ping's turn. She, she will make the test case pass, make it make the code cleaner, and then she, she will write the third test case. And then it's my turn to make the test case pass. 
So you, you select the table tennis or ping pong where uh, each of you just get a chance to do something. Uh, typically, you write a test case, make it fail, and then it's your pair to uh, her responsibility to make it pass. So you follow this style, and uh, then you, you follow the TDD style as well. Basically, that means you always write a field test case to start with. And then we will do our uh, 45 minutes per session. Uh, meaning that uh, this afternoon we have about two hours, uh, but we will not write the code all, all the way along for those two hours. Uh, we will break it into uh, 45 minute sessions, so we can possibly have maybe less two or three sessions. So after 45 minute session, I will call a break and uh, uh, let everyone stop. Then we can start probably uh, share uh, your, what, what you were doing in the last 45 minutes, uh, what's your learnings, do you discover something new? You can share with your, uh, your, room, your, your classmates. And uh, then we will start again, but in the next session, you, you're going to delete all the code in the previous session. Start from scratch again. That's, that's the basics of Kata. You can't reuse whatever you have in last session. You start from scratch again, but then you, you will notice that you're getting faster and faster uh, because the, whatever you did in last session, you still have the memory, and you just need to uh, 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 redo those things, but then you notice that you will do it much faster. So this is uh, why we call it Kata. Uh, right? You just do it again and again. Uh, okay, so we will start number uh, the round number one now, and uh, find your pair, and uh, then uh, decide which computer to use, decide which language to use. Oh, you probably want to find out. Well, so start with you probably want to find out someone who knows the same language as you, but if you would like to learn something new, you can also pair with someone that uh, use some language that you would like to learn. Uh, but otherwise, uh, find your pair. Yeah. Uh, sorry, before you start, another, another, just another reminder. Uh, do not discuss a lot about how do you, uh, your ideas, your solutions. Just quickly set up the project, write the first test case, and then start doing it. Do not put too much time on the design or thinking how to solve it. Let the test cases drive you. Uh, shall we pause first? Okay, cool. Uh, so just now when you guys uh, shared your solutions, I uh, emphasize that you need to tell other people uh, your test sequence and why do you choose that sequence. Uh, it's because uh, in TDD, uh, when you try to solve a problem, uh, there could be different solutions to that problem. And uh, when you write test cases, you're basically guiding, uh, you're guiding yourself to generate a solution using the test case. So for different sequence of test case, sometimes it guides you to generate different solutions or different answers. So for myself, when I did this exercise, the first time, uh, the, the sequence I chose is I start from one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, similar to one of the group that uh, you were using. And uh, uh, then uh, I generated the one solution. Uh, then the next time, uh, I was trying, uh, the second time I, I was trying, uh, but then I adopted a different sequence or different uh, solution. So the second time I was trying to from one, two, three, four, until 10, that's okay, same as the first time I tried. But then, instead of uh, testing the scenario for 11 or 12, I jumped to testing the scenario for 20, 30. Uh, the reason is because the second time, uh, I probably, because in, during the first time, I got some insights into the problem. And then I did a bit of uh, analysis. And I found that, uh, actually, uh, there are some patterns uh, in the Roman numeral rules. And uh, for example, uh, the rule for 1, 10, 100, uh, they fall basically follow the same rule. You just return the exact uh, Roman numeral character for that rule, for that for that uh, digit, and then the rule for two, twenty, two hundred, two hundred, or two thousand. In this case, uh, yeah, two thousand. They all very similar. You just repeat uh, the one once. Like if you repeat the one twice, you get uh, two. If you repeat ten twice, you get twenty. If you repeat one hundred twice, you get two hundred. So those few digits or numbers they follow one rule. And similarly for four, forty, and four hundred. Uh, they all fo to me, they follow the same rule. Basically, uh, it's just a 5 mi minus 1, or 15 minus 10, or 500 minus 100. Those few digits, to me, they follow the same rule. So when I look at those patterns, I feel there is this kind of rule. And then uh, the how do I uh, kind of uh, uh, write test cases to make those rules or patterns more obvious to me? Uh, that's why I, that's why I uh, wrote the sequence in this, this way. I purposely, I wrote test case for 10 then followed by 20, followed by 30. And then when I look at my code, I, s I feel that, oh, there's a pattern. The, the logic 
it's very similar to the way that I generate 1, 2, 3. Between 1, 2, 3, 10, 20, 30, 100, 200, 300. So I see a pattern there. And so basically, I, I, do, I did some analysis in the problem. I saw there's a pattern. And then I purposely changed the sequence of the test case to make those patterns more obvious to me. And naturally, it lead my solution to a different structure. So I, I basically, for, the tri for the, those two tries, I have different solutions for the same problem. And the second, second time is different just because I noticed the pattern. And I changed the sequence of the test case to, to, to help me to, to make those patterns more obvious. So that's why uh, uh, when you the, some of, just now I was talking with some of you. So when you write your t when you write test cases for TDD, you probably need some kind of uh, uh, a bit of analysis up front and ask yourself uh, what is my first test case, what is my second test case. So I, how do I structure my test case to review uh, the patterns that that is in this problem? So that's a, a te technique you can try uh, when you solve your problem again. Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, let's take ten minutes break, um, and let's come back at, at four ten. And after that, uh, I would like you to switch your pairs. Uh, do not work with your same pair again. Switch your pairs and uh, start from your the problems from scratch again, and then try a different approach if you like. Okay, so let's take a break.